Are you ready for tonight? Are you ready for tonight? I feel I'm talking to people who are not alive. Are you ready for tonight? Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Luke chapter 13. We'll read from verse 10 to 17. Luke chapter 13, from verse 10 to 17. Are you there? The scripture said what? On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 I can hear you. Let's go on. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her and immediately he straightened up. She straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leader said to the people, There are six days for work. So come and be healed on those days, not on the jealousy we kill your enemies. Yeah. Verse 15 said, The Lord answered him, You hypocrites. Doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? When he said all this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. Verse 17, let's read it together. When he said all this, I can't hear you. Uh huh. All his opponents, all his opponents, all his opponents, all his opponents, be on your feet. All his opponents, all his opponents, face your neighbor. All his opponents, all his opponents. All your opponents, all your opponents, all your opponents, all your opponents, your family opponents, your business opponents, all your opponents, they will be humiliated in the name of Jesus. I said they will be humiliated in the name of Jesus. Have your seats. I want to talk about the burdened woman. What did I say? The burdened woman. The woman that carries what? A burden. While you may be sitting down here, you may be thinking about that since it, we are talking about the burdened woman, it does not concern you. This burdened woman I'm talking about is your mother, is your sister, is your future wife, is your current wife. Are you getting what I'm trying to say to you? This woman that is carrying the burden is what? Is your mother, is your wife, is your future wife, is your sister. Am I making sense now? And you know, there is a way they find the devil attacks a family. And when the devil attacks a family, you will discover that at the end of the day, somebody is disturbed. You will discover that at the end of the day, the whole family is what? Is disturbed. If your mother is sick tonight, you will carry out finances. You will carry out all, you will sell your properties. If anything is happening to your sister tonight, you will have to sell so many things because you are wondering, what has happened to me? Am I making sense tonight? So the burdened woman is a woman that you needed to pray for tonight. And that woman needs to pray for herself tonight. But I pray for you tonight. Heaven is giving you freedom. I didn't hear you. Heaven is giving you freedom. 
I'm going to show you seven to eight women. And with those women, we are going to pray. So what did the scripture say about this woman? The scripture said for 18 years, she has been what? Crippled by a spirit. Are you there? And then she was bent over. So that means when the spirit attacked her, it did not just attack her, she could not stand up straight. Am I clear? Hello? Am I clear? So how was she walking? The spirit attacked her and she was what? Bent. A person that is bent like this, how will the person run fast? How will the person move fast? How will the person be able to do a lot of things fast? If somebody that is taller than that position comes, will the person be able to defeat that person? It will be difficult. Am I making sense tonight? So the scripture said she was what? Bent over. So she, every time she's walking, she's bending. Every time she's walking, she's bent. But then scripture had told us that Jesus was teaching where? In the synagogue. That means... That the day she received her healing, the day she received her freedom, she was where she needed to be that day because it was on the Sabbath day. It was on the Sabbath day. So on the Sabbath day, you would realize something. That they, 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 they were supposed to be in the synagogue to hear some words from the Torah and the laws of God. That was where they were supposed to sit. That you know, on the Sabbath day, they were not supposed to do any other work. Is that not so? They visit each other, listen to what God has got to say to them. So when it comes about the miracle of this woman, we were told that she was what? She was there. Do you know? That the people who were comfortable with her conditions were spiritual leaders. Hello. Did you see that scripture? The people who were comfortable with her situation were who? So she was under an atmosphere where the spiritual leader of the synagogue did not care. Immediately Jesus healed her. The scripture said he was not happy. He was angry and he said, how can you come and get healed on the Sabbath when there are six days you could come and get healed? If he had power to heal, why did he not heal her sins? If he was not comfortable with the situation, why did he not pray for her sins? He kept quiet until Jesus stepped into the matter of this woman. I pray for you today. This year, Jesus will step into your matter. I said he will step into your matter. 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 In the name of Jesus. For good 18 years. That day. The year ended in praise. That day. The year ended with thanksgiving. That day. It was a turn around. It was the beginning of a new year I came to decree upon your life this evening that it will be a new beginning no you didn't hear me I said it is becoming a new beginning it is becoming a new beginning for your family a new beginning for your children a new beginning for your husband a new beginning in the name of Jesus Christ That was the problem of one woman. A woman that a spirit attacked, she could not what? Walk up straight. She was walking like this. She was just bending. Until Jesus stepped into the matter and they did what? I want to show you another woman. Did you remember the Syrophoenician woman? Did you remember that woman? That woman that came to Jesus. And then, she said her daughter was what? Was possessed. Mark chapter 7. Let me show you something. Mark 7, 24. She, Jesus said, Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know. Yet, he could not keep his presence secret. Are you with me? Are you with me? In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit 
came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, born in Syria for initial. She begged Jesus to drive out the demon from, from. Listen to me, listen. If your daughter is possessed today, what will be happening to you? You will not have a normal life. You will not have a normal sleep. Anytime you hear any sound, nothing will work well. You will be afraid that the enemy has what? Has arrived. I am talking about women who were carrying burdens in their life. The first one carried it for how many years? 18 good years. This one now, they did not tell us, but they said she gave birth to a daughter. And by the time she gave birth to this daughter, what was the next thing that happened to the daughter? The scripture said an evil spirit again possessed the girl. So, I'm talking about your mother waking up and saying, my daughter, my son is possessed. I'm talking about your future wife that you think that there is no problem, there is no reason to pray. Waking up every day and saying, my son, my daughter is what? Is possessed. I'm talking about your sister calling you on phone and telling you every day, my daughter, my son is what? Is possessed. Am I making sense now? Do you see why you needed to pray for yourself? I'm talking about you getting married tomorrow and then you are running around and saying what? My daughter is possessed. Did you hear that she went to the market? Hello. Did you hear she went to the market? Did you hear she went to the shop? Did you hear that she went to work? When the enemy inflicts something that is important to you, you will lose your sleep. You will lose your business time. You will lose everything that concerns your life. You will just be running around from one prayer house to the other. The scripture said Jesus entered the town. She heard that he was around. And what was the next thing? She stood up quickly. That is what is happening to a lot of us here. Your problem is affecting you so much that any latest man of God in town, you know, the information does not pass you by. You do what? You know. Immediately there is a new pastor in town. You know. There is a new priest in town. You know. Why? Because there is something that is affecting your life. There is something that is affecting your life. Anywhere you turn to, you are looking for who is the new man of God. Who is the new man of God? But I came to tell you tonight... That God is on your side. That God is visiting you. That God is visiting you. That God is visiting you. In the name of Jesus. Go to Mark chapter 5. That is woman number 2. Abby. The woman number 2. She has a possessed daughter. Woman number 3. Mark chapter 5. From verse 25. What did the scripture say there? It said, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 I didn't hear you she had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had yet instead of getting better she did what instead of getting better she did what instead of getting better she did what I don't know whether you understand that scripture. They said she had seen how many doctors? She had suffered from how many doctors? There was no number. They just said what? Plenty doctors. So what happened? They said instead of getting better, eh? you've gone to a specialist hospital. Am I making sense now? You've gone somewhere. They've told you that that doctor is good. They imported the doctor. They exported another one. They brought another one because of you. The whole hospital is just concentrated on your case. Yet, instead of getting better. What did the scripture say? What did the scripture say? I pray for you tonight. Whatever has made your situation worse. Whatever has given you this burden, where it is worse. Tonight, heaven is stopping it. Heaven will lift it up. Heaven will take it away. Heaven will rebuke it for your sake. In the name of 
Jesus. Say, instead, instead of getting better. So, let me re-explain this thing I am saying to you. We are talking about your wife. We are talking about your sister. We are talking about your mother. We are talking about somebody that you are proposed to, that you say, I will get married to. Am I making sense now? We are talking about somebody that will be married to your son. But then, the scripture said, now she has been what? She has been bleeding for 12 good years. And then scripture said she has gone to so many doctors. That means by the time she's visiting all the doctors, some of you will join to sell properties to be able to help her financially. It was at a point where there was no more healing and I believe there was no more finances. That was when that Jesus passed through the land. So can you imagine that your mother has been bleeding for 12 years? Can you imagine that your son, your son's wife, has been bleeding for 12 years? Can you imagine that your sister, every day she calls you on phone, what is she saying? I have a body. When you say, my sister, what is the problem? I thought everything is fine in your house. Say, no, not everything is fine. I have been bleeding for 12 good years. How are you going to feel it? Or pray about it. The bodied woman. Sometimes you take these things for granted. You think that it will not happen to you until you get to a certain stage of life. Then you begin to see, eh? What I heard is now in my house. Hello? Am I getting, making sense now? What I heard was happening to my neighbor when I was small. Is now happening to me. Hello. You know, sometimes when things are happening to people, you think it is very far from your home. Hello. You think it is far from your home, Abby? The scripture said in First Samuel, let me show you the next woman. First Samuel chapter 1 told us about who? Hannah. The scripture said she had no what? Child. You have been small. From small, from childhood, you have been hearing about what? Hannah, the scripture said her what? Her rival, we always do, do what? Mock her. In verse 7, the scripture told us how this person continued to do what? To mock her. You know, when you hear about barrenness, when you hear about barrenness, does it, when you have not yet married, does it look like a problem you think you will have? Hello. Does it look like a problem you will have? When you hear about barrenness, sincerely, you don't think about it for your sister. You don't think about it for your mother. You don't think about it for anybody that is around you. You just believe that your own will be what? My own will be fine. You just believe that your own will be fine. I have no problem. You even tell somebody, God forbid. For this woman, from the day she got married, from the day she got married, the husband loved her. There was no problem. But is she complete? Did she feel complete? Some of us could be here. Your future wife that you will meet will bring one stress, one body to the family. And you will be body of what? Barrenness. Your family members will call you and put you under pressure and say, Marry Penina. You may even go and marry, but still you will realize that Penina is bringing more problems to your family than what you have what you have negotiated for. You may be here, you just sit down, it doesn't disturb your life. You just feel like, no, it, it, it used to happen far. But let me tell you, you see these cases we have been mentioning. It has been happening to so many people at different times of life. When your son will call you secretly and say, Mama, we have gone round. We have seen so many doctors. They said we are okay. But why my wife is not conceiving is what I don't understand. See, it is not about I have money. I can do IVF. 
you know. <laughs> Unless God help you hold the pregnancy too. Miscarriages can keep following it. Hello. It seems I'm saying something you have never heard before. That miscarriages can do what? Can follow it. So there are some, apart from getting pregnant, what is the next infliction? The infliction is that what? Miscarriage. Get pregnant, miscarriage. Get pregnant, miscarriage. Seven months, miscarriage. Six months, miscarriages. I pray for you tonight. Whatever it is that wants to give you that kind of affliction, tonight they will never follow you again. I said they will not follow you again. They will not bring it to your family. It will not happen in your family. If it is happened, the Lord will attend to it. The Lord will lift up that body from your family. Every spirit of miscarriage depart from your life. In the name of Jesus. Are you seeing different women with different problems? Hello? Are you seeing the problems now? That as you are looking behind, you know, as I'm talking about barrenness, sincerely, you may be telling yourself, thank God I have escaped that one. Abby? Hello? <laughs> you may be telling yourself, I have done what? Shall I show you another woman that escaped barrenness but suffered another blow? Go to Ruth chapter 1. I want you to follow it this night so that you begin to gather your prayer points. Ruth chapter 1. We'll read from verse 1 to 5. The scripture said, In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, together with what? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. His wife and two. Did they escape barrenness? Yes. Was there barrenness in that house? No. His wife and two. Read for that. The man's name, verse two, the man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem. Judah and they went to Moab to live there. Now Elimelech, Naomi, Naomi's husband, died. Widowhood started through us. Hello. What happened again? She and she was left with her two. Verse 4. They married Moabite women. One named Opa and the other Ruth. And they had lived up there. About 10 years. In verse 5, check what happened. Let's read it together. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Both Malon and Kilion also, also, and Naomi was left without her two sons and her. The thief came to steal. To kill. See, if I tell you to pray tonight and you think it is a joke, 10 years from now, don't cry. 20 years from now, don't be saying, why me? Because that is why we are having this retreat. That is why we are saying, let us pray into the future. Did the family not escape barrenness? If you look at the family, what will you say? This family is what? It's blessed. The family is blessed. Say Elimelech. Ah, he has two sons. Two nice, wonderful sons. The scripture said it was famine. They went to the land of the Moabites. When they stayed there, the angel of death visited her first. What happened? Her husband died. When your husband died and you still have children, what do you tell yourself? At least my children will console me. My children buried their father. They will also bury me. Did her children bury her? No. Do you understand the kind of prayer you need to pray? See, you needed to pray for yourself and tell yourself, I will bury my parents. Hello. <laughs> Do you see how it is affecting the whole family? I will bury my... May untimely death not take my word. 
my mother, my father. Because to be an orphan, ask those of us, it's not a, it's not a smooth journey. To be a widow is not what? A smooth journey. To be an orphan is not what? A smooth journey. The scripture said, after 10 years of marriage, what happened to her? She lost her two sons. Did they leave any grandson? Did you see how between, see, can we also call that barrenness? Who is a barren woman? A woman that never conceived or that does not have a child. Abby? This one conceived, we were celebrating. She is now back to square one. Like a woman who never gave birth to anyone. No grandchild, nothing. So imagine your mother. Imagine your sister calling you on the phone and telling you, my husband is dead. While you are comforting her, few years down the line, the children have graduated, they are married, they are now working. They now said to her, they now call you to tell you, my two sons are what? Are dead. How will you take that kind of news? See, while you think these stories are far, just a few days ago, somebody was sharing that with me. A brother traveled to go and bury his sister in the UK. The day they were burying the sister, just this thing just happened a few days ago. He had that attack. On the way, to what? To go and bury. Already, anybody, everybody that was going to do whatever, uh, the ground has been set, casket, everything, body taken from the mortuary. As they were going, brother had a problem. Rushed to the hospital. He also died. The mother is still alive. And the mother is about 80 years old. How you won't go tell the woman, say, in the period of few weeks, Two of our children are what? Are dead. Do you understand why you needed to pray? You needed to pray for long life. You needed to pray and say, God, may my mother, may my sister, may my wife not die an untimely death. Am I making sense now? See, there are conditions that have affected people's lives. Burdens that people carry that you don't know that they are carrying. You will see some people walking on the road. They are walking as if they are mad. They are walking as if they've lost their senses. You don't know what life has done to them. You will see people looking at you. You are talking and talking, they are just looking at you. You don't know what life has done what? Has done to them. This woman escaped barrenness. She can even tell you at what point she gave birth. Oh, this is how I gave birth to Malon. This is how I gave birth to Killian. This is how I gave birth to them. You see this one? When he was small, he was stubborn. This one was gentle. She can be giving you that story. Few years down the line, the children that were supposed to take care of her are now what? Dead. What will you do? With all the joy of your youthfulness that you got married, remember that you wore wedding gown. You jumped. Your party was big. Everything, they celebrated you. You were the first one to marry that way in your family. You broke the family record. All of a sudden, the people who are not even up to your standard, the people who never even married in a home that you can say is a better home. The people who, you see, they got married, you got married to them, and then uh, they looked at you, they say, oh, they were envying you. People who were jealous in the kind of marriage that you had. Then, all of a sudden, they look at you. They have five children with them. Your own, no one has what? Has remained. Do you want to experience this kind of thing? Are you seeing the kind of problems? This thing that happened to this woman, if you are the sister to Naomi or the brother to Naomi, will you have peace? 
when you are at your old age, at your old age, you now heard that your sister, the only two sons she has, is what? They are what? They are dead. How will you comfort your sister? You know, she cannot rush back to go and give birth again. The time has what? Has passed. I'm talking about a disaster that hits you at a time when you cannot go back to get a backup plan. Everything is what? Is scattered. Do not allow me. Do not. Savior, it's a prayer. We have seen five women, Abby. Let me show you the number six. Second Kings chapter six. When we ask you to pray concerning some things, please pray. Second Kings chapter six. Let's read from verse 27. Or verse 26, or rather. Take, take us back to 26. As the king of Israel was passing by on a wall, a woman cried to him, Help me, my Lord. I can't hear you. What did the king say? The king replied, If the Lord does not help you, where can I help you? Where can I get help for you? For the threshing, from the threshing floor, from the wine press, then he asked her, what's the matter? She answered, this woman said to me, give up your son, so we may eat him today, and tomorrow we will eat my son. So we cooked my son and ate him. The next day, I said to her, give up your son, so, so we may eat him. But she has hidden him. Now, let me break the scripture. Hello. <laughs> he shocked you. Hello. Can I break that scripture for you? There was already a problem. Their enemies had already surrounded the nation of Israel. There was no way, there, there was no way to escape. Food was scarce. Are you getting it now? Food was what? Was scarce. There was no food in the land. So these two women... Good friends, Abby, good neighbors. Is that also? What did they say? They told themselves, say, see, let us do what? See, we'll do it like that. We eat your child today. Tomorrow, we will do what? What was the condition that made them to make this choice? There was no food. Hello, are you with me? So the other one decided to do what? Kill. They cooked. She watched her son dead, cooked, and they did what? They ate it. The next day, when it was time for the other woman's son to die, what happened? The woman did what? Let me ask you a question. Was it not your friend that told you, let us go to the house of that native doctor? Now you are carrying a problem. When she told you, let us do it, let us do it, you did it together. She saved her own family. You entered into trouble. They said, who we carry the sacrifice? She told you, carry it. Mama Emeka, carry it. When you carried it, the spirit marked you for destruction, marked you for the sacrifice. I'm talking about people who will convince you to do something. But they will save themselves and the disaster will fall upon your life. This woman's life, this woman's life was completely shut down. Her son is what? Dead. Can she wake back the son? No. The other woman went to hide her son. Every relationship that will cause you pain that is not of God. Every relationship that will bring you to shame and mockery. Every relationship that the enemy will set to deceive you. To destroy your destiny. I pray that God will separate you. May God separate you. May Elohim separate you. In the name of Jesus. Hello. 
Are you seeing the problem? Two people who agreed to do something. The other one did what? Escaped. The other one entered into trouble. Who led you into this trouble? Remember I told you once that may God not allow you to join somebody to do a bad thing. And it is your death that will make the person to repent. Come, more, go steal. Come, let's go and look for trouble. Come, let's go and insult. Come, let's go and do this. Come, let's go and do that. Then something negative will happen to you. And the person will come back to the altar. Lord, forgive me. I repent. Who pushed you? The person. Who lost his life all her life? You. At the end of the day, who is repenting after you die? The person that pushed you. Am I making sense this evening? Can you see the kind of disaster that happened to these women? Her child is what? Is gone. Go to 1 Kings chapter 3. I want to show you another woman. <laughs> That's woman number what? Number what? Number 7. You are going to pray very soon. And you are going to pray it crazily. 1 Kings chapter 3. We read from verse 25. He gave what? He then gave order to do what? I can't hear you. Cut the living child into and give half to one and half to what? Verse 26. The woman's son whose son was what? Said what? Was deeply moved. And out of love for her son, said to the king, Please, my lord, give her the living baby. Don't kill. But the other said what? I can't hear you, everybody. Neither I nor you will have him. The baby should be what? Caught into two. You remember this story? It was the story of the two prostitutes that had babies. One slept on her son, and then the son did what? The child died. When she woke up and discovered that her child died, what did she do? She now exchanged the child, and then they went to meet Solomon. When they went to meet Solomon, because they were arguing, because the other one said, this is not my child. Even if we get birth on the same day, I know my child. This is not my child. And then when they went, Solomon decided to play a trick on them. To see clearly who owns the child. What did Solomon say? Bring a sword. Bring a knife. Let us cut the baby into two. What did the other woman say? Neither you nor I will shall have him. The baby should be what? Let me ask you a very sincere question. Who is this useless person you kept around you? That when something bad happened to them, they wish it that it will happen to you. Hello. You are not catching what I'm saying to you. Immediately their child failed in school. They are waiting for your son to fail in school. Immediately your marriage failed. They are waiting for your marriage to do what? To fail. Immediately your husband died. They are, they are waiting for, their, for your own husband to do what? To die. Any misfortune that happened to them, they want it to happen in your life. And yet they tell you that they are your friends. Hello. See, if you are not angry enough to pray this prayer and say, God, anything that looks like a burden in my life, you must lift it up. See, a woman that you call your friend, they have been together. They sleep in the same room. The day the child of that one died, anything that will make the other child die is what she was waiting for. Immediately the king said, let us cut the baby into two. Say yes, yes, let's cut the baby. People who will go back to make sure that evil happens to you because their business failed, because their marriage failed, because something happened to them, because they did not marry the kind of husband that you married, they will go back and sabotage your marriage. Why? Their own, they are not enjoying it. Why should you enjoy your own marriage? Am I making sense to somebody tonight? Somebody that is just around you. That was the burden this woman carried. 
the burden of seeing a child being cut into two, said, okay, please, for the sake of the love I have for this child, give her the child. It is better that this child is not with me than to watch me. Watch my child being what? Cut into two. The other woman, even when she was see, when people are evil, they don't even hear when you are giving them negotiation. See, even when she's saying it, the other woman did not hear that one. Oh. And all this, my child die. Your own must, well, must die. Any hypocrite around you. Any hypocrite around you. Any hypocrite around you. That wants your business to fail. That wants your marriage to fail. That wants your husband to fail. That wants your life to fail. Any hypocrite around you. Let that hypocrite be separated in the name of Jesus. Let the hypocrite be separated in the name of Jesus. Let the hypocrite be scattered in the name of Jesus. Hello. <laughs> Are you seeing that there is a problem? Are we permitted to take time to pray about these things? Are you seeing the problem? So imagine the woman we are talking about is your future wife. Hello. That the only son that you have, the only child, your wife now came and told you, say, you see that our child that died, it was that my friend that killed him. Or you go for prayers and they tell you the woman that killed your son is your friend. And then you are asking yourself, what did I do to her? Am I making sense to somebody tonight? That sometimes you don't know the person that is close to you until disaster happened to you. That is when your eyes will open like, here. Yeah? Immediately you come and announce, I have a contract of 20 million. They will go around spoiling your name. Don't mind him. He's pretty. He's doing as if he's the only one. Don't mind him. He's an occultic man. Do you know that they know that you are not occultic? The only pain that is there is that things have turned around for your good. Who is this person that is around you? That when disaster happened to them, they will now say what? It must happen to you. That altar must catch fire tonight. I said that altar must catch fire tonight. That's woman number what? Let's do it with the last one and then we pray. In First Kings chapter 17, we're told from verse 7 about the widow of Zarephath. Is that not so? The scripture said, that God has sent Elijah. You remember there was famine. And what happened? The scripture had told us that she went, he went, he went there and told that I see God say, I should tell you, I should tell you, uh, give me food to eat first. And she said, see, we are gathering sticks to what? To do, uh, to bake bread and then me and my son will what? For all the mothers that are in this place, if you are that mother, you know that the last thing you are cooking, that rice, is the last food that is in the land. Remember, there is no food in the market. Remember, there is no food anywhere. What you are eating now is what you saved at home. And then you are now told, you are now telling somebody, you see, after this rice, me and my son know we will die. How do you think about it? Listen very quickly. Do you know how these women survived? The first one, they said she was in the synagogue and Jesus was what? Was teaching. Let me tell you, if you don't want to carry this burden for the rest of your life, show up in the presence of God. What did I say? What did I say? Show up in the presence of God when it is time to do what? To show up. You wake up in the morning, show up. You are going back to bed, show up. It is time to come to church, show up. Anything that has to do with the presence of God, show up. Because Jesus said he saw her. Jesus recognized she was there and said, come forward. That was how healing was granted to her. The serial for initial woman, was it not the same thing? When she heard the woman with the issue of blood, the scripture say, when she heard that Jesus was what? You know, when the scripture talks about 
you heard. It is not just uh, Jesus don't come down. No. There is a type of hearing that they explain to you who the person they are talking about is. So she heard he was a miracle worker. He is a miracle worker. She heard that if only you can get close to him, that man, that God, that prophet, that king, he can do what? A new thing in your life. She heard, she heard. By the time she heard, faith cometh by. I can't hear you. Faith cometh by. So she did what? When she heard, she said, ah, oh yeah. Let me go and do what? And look for him. Do you hear when God is present? When you come to church, when we tell you be serious, you don't understand. Do you hear when God steps into the garden and says, where are you? I came to heal you. Where are you? I came to bless you. Where are you? I came to remove that pain. Where are you? I came to do, deal with every single thing that is happening in your life. Where are you? I came to do something. The two women that were fighting over the children, the child that the one ate one and they does not want to kill the other. What did she do? The scripture said, she shouted, Oh king, come and help me. There are days that if you don't learn how to pray and how to shout and how to call upon his name, he said, call upon me and I will do what? She did not sit down there and say, see, my mind maker has cheated me. She has cheated me. I leave you for God. She saw that there was somebody that can help her in the matter. She said, oh, king, come and do what? Come and help me. Your father is the king of kings. How much more when you call upon him, he will answer your prayer. The widow of Zarephath, what did she do? The only thing that will help her save the life of her daughter and save the life of her son, I mean, there is her son and her life. What was the thing she did? She did what? She sacrificed. Hello. You know, every time we are talking about sacrifice, sacrifice, you think it's this one that you have tender that you tell God, take 50 kobo, I dash you 50 kobo. That was the last food she was eating. And then she said, at the word of the Lord, if you can sacrifice this thing now, I know it is difficult for you, but everything will be what? Will be turned around. That was what this burdened woman who was preparing to die, that was how she saved her son. Let me ask you a question. What do you do to save the life of your children? What are the sacrifices you have carried out to save the life of your children? Sometimes you wake up and you are wondering, why is it that other people's children are excelling in life no matter what? Did you know the sacrifice their mothers or their parents paid? They will see a man of God. They will say, sir, sir, please, please, please. This is a seed offering. Pray for my son. They go to another parish. As they are there, they are doing one donation or the other. They carry it and say, God, for the sake of my son, we are he goes. Let him find the helper. They sacrifice it there. Were you there when they were doing it? No. Some of you are too lazy to sacrifice for the son you are proud of. You think that this world is simple. This world is spiritual. And the powers that are in it are not your mate. Whether you are intelligent, whether you are dumb, whether you are big, if you like, have six pack. That in the realm of the spirit, all demons bow at the mention of the name of Jesus, not at your six pack. Hello. Have you not realized that it is those who have six pack that are doing the work of the bodyguard? No, no, you didn't hear that. Hello. Is it not the people who carry six pack that are doing bodyguard? Is that Gote doing bodyguard? Eh? There is somebody that has it. There is somebody that will be doing the work for him. So when they tell you to pray, to sacrifice, you are too lazy financially. You are the one who went to consult an altar. A friend deceived you like that woman. Let us do this. There is a problem in the life of your son. There is a problem in the life of your daughter. You are too lazy to carry out sacrifices. When they say let us offer sacrifices, some of you, since the day they gave birth to you in this church, it's 20 naira you have been offering as your sacrifice. See, today, that's your sacrifice. And you want something to happen in your life. Every day, I don't have. I don't have. As you are confessing, I don't have. That is how I don't have has been following your life. I don't have. I don't have. The scripture said 
that I think in First Kings chapter four, or Second Kings chapter four, said the woman went to meet Elisha. Second Kings, I think, and said, "See, master, your servant who was a prophet too has what? He's dead, and he's the, the people he is owing. He was a prophet. He was a servant to Elisha, but he was what? He was poor when he died." He, people he was owing wanted to come and get his two sons to become their slaves. What did she do? She went to Elisha. Elisha asked her a simple question. What do you have? Say, I have, not, I have olive oil in the house. Say, go and get containers. Every time God, see, that is why you must hear. Oh. Every time God tells you, stand up. Sacrifice that thing. And you reject it. And you say no. That condition will continue till you die. Sacrifice is not a joke. It was the sacrifice that the mother did that saved the life of the child. She does not want him to do it. To die. Tonight. What is God saying to you? Your sister may be in this problem. One of these I am talking about. Your future wife that you are shouting, I will marry a good wife, may enter into one of these problems. How will you solve it? You needed to pray prayers that we wait for you 20 years from now. You needed to pray prayers that we wait for your sons 20 years from now. You needed to pray a prayer for yourself and say, God, today lift up this body because you are not a man. You are God. Be on your feet. You're not a man. Oh.